a wave on a string. So how do we make this pulse or whatever we want to do uh, on a string move? And, and I'm not going to derive the wave equation. I've done that before. I just want to go back over and build this in Python and model and make this move. And because this is the wave equation in for a one-dimensional string right there that says that the because we have this pulse right here this it can have a y value but that y value changes with time so it changes with both chime time and position along the x-axis um, so we have this wave equation that says the second partial of y with respect to time is equal to the tension divided by the linear mass density second partial of y with respect to x and then we get the velocity squared as that and so but we want to model this and it's a very complicated equation well what we can do is to use the finite difference method. So the finite difference method says, let's just, I'm going to redraw this. Suppose that I have this string and I represent this with some finite points right there. So there I have uh, y1, y2, y3, y4, y5. And I, with these points, I can represent a second derivative as a finite difference. So here I have uh, delta x. So I can represent, uh, I don't, I guess I'll derive this once. Okay, I'm going to derive it once. So suppose I want to find the, uh, the first derivative at point y2. So the first derivative of y2, the partial of y2 with respect to x, uh, well, I'm going to take the, these two points right there from, from, actually I'm going to go from here to there. I'm going to go from here to there and I'm going to take the slope because the first derivative is the slope. So the slope between these two points would just be y3 minus y2 divided by the distance, which is twice delta x. And I don't need the first derivative. I need the second derivative. Well, the second derivative is the derivative of the derivative. So I can find the derivatives at the half points right here. So this point uh, will be using this space interval and that point using that space interval so I can write y2 the second derivative it's going to be this derivative which is the partial um, I'm sorry it's going to be y3 minus y2 over delta x minus this derivative which is y2 minus y1 over delta x and all of that over delta x if you do the math it's not too hard for the generic case, you get the second partial with respect to uh, x at the point i, 2, 3, 4, whatever, uh, is going to be equal to uh, y i plus 1 minus 2 y i plus y i minus 1, all of that over delta x squared. Because you get that 2 minus, because you have a 2 right there and a, a y2 and then you get another one right there and that's why they're two and that's the second derivative that's a finite second derivative but we also have these things can change in not just position but time so we need a double index here so each one of these i'm going to move it up here it would have another time interval too so i can write this as y i k so i is the space position and then k is the time difference because we're going to break this into time intervals too and that means that I can do the same thing uh, for the second derivative in time so let's write that out I'm going to rewrite the the wave equation let's rewrite the wave equation the second partial of y with respect to time is equal to t over mu second partial of y with respect to x and I just said the second partial of y with respect to x is equal to y i plus 1 minus 2 y i plus y i minus 1 over delta x squared. And I can do the same thing, this is i, the same thing for k, the second partial of y k with respect to t, it would do the same thing. It'd be y k plus 1 minus 2 y k plus y k minus 1 over delta t squared. So let's combine these two together, give a, a, both indices, and put this into the 
wave equation. So I'm going to write my uh, y equation like this. I'm going to I'm going to include the i's, right? So this is for the ith element, and all these are going to have an i in there. So that means I have y i k plus one minus two y i k. There should be commas in here, but I won't always put the commas. Uh, plus y i k minus 1, all of that over delta t squared. That's this. Equals t over mu. Now I have this one. It's that. And I'm going to have, they're all going to have a k, right? They're all going to have a k. So I need a parentheses here. y i plus 1 comma k minus 2 y i k comma plus y i minus 1 k all of that over delta x squared. Now, you'll notice that I have things changing in both space and time. One of the things right here in the space part, I have a y i plus 1 and I have a y i minus 1. And so we, we have this problem over here that I can't, if that's my last element, I can't solve the equation here because I can't take the derivative of the thing. I don't have another thing. Same thing over here. But I'm going to just fix those endpoints. They're not, they're boundary conditions. They're set. So I don't have to worry about solving uh, them. I'm just going to go from here to there. So that's the, the second element to the second to last. And they have one before and one after, so I can't do it. And what about time? Well, for time, I don't really care, right? Because in time, uh, I always want to find the next one in the future. I do need the past. And now we'll get to that in a second. Okay, so let's look right here. This is position in the future, position now, position in the past, and these are all now, right? So I only have one y i k plus one. This is the new position in the future. I want to solve for the future position. So I want to solve this for y i k plus one. So I'm going to multiply both sides by delta t squared. And let's just write this. And then I'm going to, let's write it out. Let's not, let's not take shortcuts. y i k plus 1 minus 2 y i k plus y i k minus 1. Remember, that's the past equals, I'm going to put all these constants together, t delta t squared mu delta x squared. I'm going to call this r squared, this whole thing. Because no one wants to write that all the time. That's fine. And then I have all that other stuff. Y i plus 1 k minus 2 y i k plus y i minus 1 minus k. Now I just need to add these two terms to both sides and I can solve for this. So I have y i k plus 1 equals, that goes to the other side, 2 y i k and that one goes to the other side and becomes minus minus y i k minus one and then that's plus r squared y i plus one k minus two y i k plus y i plus no that's a minus minus one k ugh okay I mean, let's think about what this says, though, right? Because this says that if I want to find, if I take one element on my wire, on my string, I can find its new position. All I need to know is the, this is the position now. This is the position in the past, the previous position. This is the next position to the right now. This is the position now. This is the next position to the left now. And I can do that. So what I'm going to do is to break my string into finite pieces and finite time. I'm going to put the ends bound, so that way I, I'll be able to solve for these two, which will exist because they'll be set. Um, and I do need to start off with uh, a now value and a then value. Okay. So I'm going to break this in. I'm going to use lists. And if you're not good with lists, I'm going to use WebVPython because that's my favorite tool. Uh, and if you want to work on your lists and graphing, I do have a video on that uh, that I just made. I'll put a link down below, although I'll probably forget, and I apologize. So let's jump into Python and make this happen. We've got a lot of stuff to do, but it's going to be worth it. Trust me. Switching to Python now. 
Hello, Python. This is WebV Python. I will give you the code. Do not worry about that. The first thing we're going to need is we're going to make a graph. I'm going to make a graph from, uh, of, of Y versus X, and it's going to be animated so that it'll be cool. We have to have something cool, right? So G1 is a graph. If you're not familiar with graphing, let me know. I do have a tutorial on graphing. You know I have a tutorial on everything. I do everything like that. And this is not big enough. Uh, let's just do X title equals X, Y title equals Y, and then I'm going to put the width at 500. Let's do 400. Um, mm, let's do 500. And I want to make it a little bit skinnier because you, you can. Uh, so let's do height of 200. Let's see if that works. Not 2,000. And then the, the graph I'm going to plot, I'll call that F1 G curve color equals color dot blue. Now I need my values, my variables uh, for what, what I'm going to use here. Let's just pick um, mu equals 1, t equals 1. This may be unrealistic, but it will work. Uh, the length of the string is 1. Yeah, and a lot of ones. Now I do need my dx's and my dt's. These, if, you're ha if your code's not working, check your dx and dt because that can get a little wild. I'm going to put dx is 0 0.01, dt is 0 0.001. And I, I got that before and it worked. Now I can calculate my R value, which I'm going to need. So I'm going to calculate R. So that's going to be dt over dx times the square root of t over, over mu. So R is square root of t over mu times dt over dx. Okay, got it. Now the first thing I'm going to do is to make my, my list of x values. And I, I need that just to plot things and stuff like that. So, I'm, And that's a great place to start. And I'm going to start, I'm just going to make that. So I'm going to make a list, an empty list called X. And make this a little bit bigger. Uh, and make this, I'm going to run out of room. Okay, there. That's big. That's, that's not too big. Uh, let's do this xt equals zero, uh, and what I'm going to do is that's my temporary x value. And it's going to move it forward in x until I get to the end. Uh, while xt is less than l, uh, do the following. I did it a different way. I did it in range. Well, that's fine. Let's do it this way. Uh, while xt, I think this will work. Yeah. It worked. Uh, so I'm going to add that value to my list. X equals X plus XT. Now I'm going to increase my value of X. XT equals XT plus DX. And then I'll have a list of X values. Okay. And, and if you want, you can print that out. But don't print it out. That's just a bad idea. Now what do I need to do? I need to make three other lists. I need a list for Y. Now... I need a list for y in the future, and I need a list for y in the past. So I'm going to call those y old, y now, y new. I should point out that everything I learned about finite difference methods, I learned from uh, another YouTuber, uh, Let's Code Physics. His videos are great. I would, I'm going to put a link down below um, because if I made a mistake, I'm going to blame it on him. But he is great, and his videos are great. Um, and I don't know much about Python except what I learned from other people. Okay, so let's make these lists. Y old equals an empty list. Y new equals an empty list. Uh, and then Y now equals an empty list. And now I need to populate this. I need to put stuff in there. And that's going to be my initial uh, function that I'm going to let evolve in time. Imagine that I'm going to pluck the string. Let's try plucking the string. So I pull it up at some point and I let go. So let's just give it uh, an, a value uh, and then let's see, how can we do this? I'm trying to think what would be a good pluck. Um, let, and we're going to change this. So let's see, I'm going to give it an initial value. Let's say A. Uh, a is how much I pluck it. One of the things when you derive this wave equation for a string, your your displacement should be small compared to the string. So I'm going to say a, my, it's going to be L over 20. 
So that's how much I pull it up. And let's just pull it up halfway point and let's just see if this works. Uh, so I want to go through my X values and calculate my values for Y old, Y new, and Y now. Uh, I can do that as this for I in range length of X. So X is a list. I'm going to go through each element in the list of X and call the number I as an index so I can reference it. Uh, now I can calculate Y old, Y new, and now and I'm going to put them all as the same value. It doesn't really matter. Uh, so Y old equals Y old plus. Now how do I calculate this? I'm going to say, oh, I need to do this. Uh, if X I is less than a over 2, L over 2, right? Then I'm going up. So this will be, and this may not work, uh, A times XI, no, A. Um, so A would be actually, I want the slope. So the slope here would be, let's call this B. B would be uh, A over L over 2. So 2a, I'm making a mess here. Let's just leave it as a, and let's just see what happens. a times xi, right? So now at, when I start off x is 0, and then, oh, and let's, that's going to be too big. So let's do this 200. Let's just try that. Uh, and it's going to keep increasing the value of y old and y new and y now. I'm going to put them all the same. Okay, one more, y new, which I actually don't even need that one because I'm gonna change that right away. So I'm increasing up to that point. Oh, this has to be indented because it's part of an if statement. Okay, now if it's greater than that, I wanna, I wanna decrease my value. Uh, and I wanna, so let's put, let's see if I can write this uh, else. And I'm just gonna copy all these. else uh, it's going to be equal to you know what I could do I could increase the value of y by a dy amount let's try that let's try uh, b is equal to 0 0.001 and let's just put this as um, mm, nah let's just keep doing this okay so the, the this is going to be at the at the center Oh, I'm making this way too complicated. At the center, scratch that. Let's do half a sine wave. <laughs> That'll be easier, right? Half a sine wave. So I'm going to say, oh, I don't want to delete that. Let's just delete this. Um, a times sine of, if I want to do a sine wave, I can pick any value I want, but let's do uh, 2 times pi times xi divided by um, the total length. Yeah, that'll work. And then put it there, put it there, and then I'm gonna make these zero, right? So it'll be flat, that'd be good. Okay, let's just, let's just see if it works. I'm gonna plot, I wanna plot my thing. So 4i in range length of x. They're all the same length. I want to make a plot. Um, F1.plot. The x value is going to be uh, xi. The y value is going to be y now i. It doesn't really matter which one I pick. Let's see if this runs and gives us a picture. I didn't even save it yet, so hopefully it gives us a picture. Oh, look, it did work. High five. Okay, let's save it. Uh, wave on string fun. I just added fun there because I got another wave on the string. Okay, so we got things working. We have um, we have our stuff. Now what we want to do is to go through. I need to go through and calculate the new values of y. I need to calculate the new value of y and then uh, update my old values. So that's what I'm going to do. So let's, oh, we don't have a t. t equals zero, I already had a dt. 
uh, while t is less than 5, rate 100. It's not going to run in real time. Uh, now, I do want to make an animated graph too. So to make an animated graph, I need to make an empty list and add my data to the list and then plot it all at once. I'm going to call that list F data, and it's going to be an empty list. Now I want to go through and calculate my new value of Y. So I can do that, but I don't want to change. I, I can't do the whole thing, right? I want to go from I equals 1 to I equals the last second to last one. I can do that with the following for i in range 1 to the length of x minus 1. So that's going to start at 1, not 0, and it's going to go to 1 less than the length. So that means I won't get those endpoints, which is good. Uh, now I just need to, to type my equation. This is the equation. Whenever I see an i, I'm going to use i. Whenever I see k plus 1, that's new. When I see k, that's now. When I see k minus 1, that is old. So uh, y, I'm calculating the y new. y new of i, that's what I solved for. And it's going to be equal to, I'm looking at my list right here, 2 times y now i minus y old i plus r squared times y now i plus 1, y now i plus 1, minus 2 times y now i plus y now i minus 1. That should be it. Should be, but will it be? I don't know. Okay, so I went through and I'm calculating the new values. Now, the next time I come through the list, I need to have new values for new, now and old, right? So that means I need to take my old values and make them my now values, and then I need to take my now values and make my new values. So let's do that. For i in range of 1 to length minus length of x minus 1. Now you might want to say just set y old equals y now. If you do that, then you are having both those lists point to the same place and, and they won't, if you change one, it will change the other. So you have to go uh, item by item and we can do that with y old i equals y now i, right? So now I've taken my, my old and moved them forward in time. And now I want to do the same thing for my nows. Y now i is equal to y new i. So there I did it. Now I want to make a graph. And I could do these, I could combine some of these for loops, but I'd like to separate them because it's, it's easier to, to comprehend. Um, so to make a graph, I want to go through all my values of y now. And, or I'm going to use y new because I just calculated those y new and plot them. So I want to add them to that list f data. 4i in range length of x. I'm going to do the whole thing. Those other ones didn't change. Uh, f data equals f data plus a list. And each list, I need a, a list of lists. It's going to be xi and y new i. And yes, there's a lot of square brackets there. It's fine. Now I need to plot the data. So f dot f1 dot data equals f data. And then I need to update time. t equals t plus dt. I mean, it's not that bad, right? That's not too much stuff. It's not too bad. Come on. I mean, it's, it's a little bad, but it's not, it's not too bad. Let's see if it runs, though. That's the real question. Will it run? If it runs, I'm giving myself a double high five, and you should, too. That's a double high five right there. Okay, now let's fix this graph because that graph's really bothering me because it's zooming in. Uh, I can go up here and just say uh, y max equals, uh, what did I put that at? A was L divided by 200. Um, so 0 0.01. Let's try that. Yeah. That's nice, huh? Okay, 
So we have a wave on a string. It seems to be working. We're pretty happy with it. But what if I want to just check something? I know that if I put a sign function in there, that should be a standing wave. I should get a standing wave. Um, let's do that. So if I do that, I'm going to go over here. And I can do that very easily. I can just do while uh, I just do if x is less than l, and then else shouldn't happen. Now I just do a whole sine wave. And there you go. I didn't do a min, so it is zooming and it's making me mad. I guess I should do that. Uh, let's do that. Min, y min, is negative y min equals negative 0 0.1. Wait, what was that? 0 0.01. And let's increase the rate that we run this because that is kind of slow. So let's make this uh, 300. And I broke it. I must have did something up here. Y min equals, oh, I didn't put a comma. Nice. Standing wave. Okay. Let's do one more thing. What if I want to make a wave pulse? Moving down there like that, right? I want to make a pulse. In, I picked why now and why old were the same thing. So it started from rest. If I, if I want to move it, what I can do is to make a wave and then put my y old as something different in the past. So I'm going to do that. Let's do that. It'll be cool. Okay, now, this is a little bit more complicated, but I think we can do it. Um, I'm going to go through and write down here when I make my list. Here's, my, here's where I put my initial values right here. I'm not going to do y old. I'm not going to do y old, right? I'm gonna do those separately. And I wanna do like a part of a wave. So let's do um, C equals um, L over four. And then I'm going to put this as A times sine pi, let's just do one hump. So pi, pi, pi X over C. So it's that way it doesn't have to be half the wavelength or anything like that. So I'm just going to put a little hump there. Let's just check and see that that actually works. Um, I can plot that. I'm going to comment out all this stuff because it's not going to run. Put it down here. And then run that just so we can see without running it that we have our shape right. Okay, so that's not right. Oh, it's not right because I didn't finish it. I said that. I want to do this. Um, let's do if if yeah if it's less than b c else is zero that'd be better so i have a low pole these are my poles now i need to do the old part so the old part's gonna be the exact same thing but everything's gonna be shifted by v delta t right i'm gonna have the exact same x value but it needs to be shifted by the velocity uh did i calculate the velocity i don't think that i did i'm looking at my other V, so V, let's put it up here. V equals the square, did I delete some the square root of T over mu. Now, uh, that's my, I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to paste it. And I'm going to say uh, just the old now. I don't care about now. I don't care about new. I'm going to delete those. I'm only doing the old. So for the old, I'm going to say if uh, if xi is less than c plus v times dt, right? So that means shifted over. But also, I, I want to have it zero on the left side. So it has to be and uh, xi is greater than v times dt. So I shifted that whole pulse over a little bit. Then I can say, this is true, but I want to put over here uh, the same thing I have up there, 
a times pi times x over over c, but I want to say x uh, plus v times dt. So it shifted over. And then otherwise, it's zero. Okay. So now I what I did is I made that pulse, and then my next pulse is shifted over a little bit. So now I have my now and my old, and I can use that to plot everything else. So let's turn this stuff back on. If this works, uh, it's going to be a triple high five. I didn't, I should save it. Save. Run. There you go. Look at that. There's your pulse. There is a wall over there. You can't see it. And, and the nice thing is, too, when it hits that wall, it reflects and goes backwards. And that's just pretty cool. I'm pretty, I'm pretty pleased with myself, if I do say so myself. And it only took 30 minutes, 31 minutes. It's just fun to watch. So you can think of your any other kind of pulse that you want to get it to work. And you get some wiggling and stuff like that because it's not a perfect thing. But remember, it, if, you're, if your program's not working the way you like it, it's probably your DX and DT need to be adjusted because that is sensitive to that. Um, but there you go. Code down below. I told you I'd make the listing down below. I'm not going to forget. I'm probably going to forget. Um, have fun with this. We're going to use this. I'm making this for my quantum mechanics class because we're going to do the Schrodinger equation. We're going to model the Schrodinger equation, which is more complicated than this, but it's kind of similar too. So that's this is good practice for that. All right, there we go. Done. In the bag. Completed. Talk to you later.